Thanks, uh, Sikana, for organizing this, uh, this session. So, because and for inviting your uh, EAP staff community to look at Blitz Report, because as you know, we have this uh, reporting tool for quite some time already, and we have enhanced it recently with a lot of new functionality. And so, there are some people on this call who have seen Blitz Report already, and some people who see it for the first time. So, I would first give a brief introduction to the tool and the functionality, and then show some of the example reports that can that come with the tool, especially from the finance area. We have a lot of content. And then I also briefly show the supply chain hub functionality, which is specifically for manufacturing customers, and also our new upload functionality, because initially we only had, the, in this tool, we only had reporting functionality but we have recently enhanced it so that we can also load data back from Excel into Oracle EBS to replace web ADI, for example. So I'm logging into our demo server. So first to mention, so on our webpage, you find, uh, yeah, the company name is Engenetics. The tool is called Blitz Report. You find a lot of information. There's also, a demo environment that can be accessed. So we have a lot of people, it's an open vision environment. So you can click on this demo environment link and then you get to the login page and you also have the credentials that you can log in with. So if you need to test something with the vision environment and you would like to look at some functionality, not just Blitz report related, you're very welcome to uh, use this environment for your own uh, test purpose or basically to look at Oracle EBS standard functionality. So the idea of Blitz Report is that we have the, the tool integrated in the EBS and Suite navigation. So we have a forms version that was the initial user interface that we have developed. We meanwhile also have an old framework version for people who don't like to log into Oracle forms. But the main uh, or the, the main functionality is in the forms version, which I'm showing now. So we have the Blitz report function directly in the EBS navigation, and we also have an Excel icon up here. So if the user would like to run a report, they can click on this Excel icon, and then they have uh, our custom Blitz report form opening, and it also opens automatically with the report that the user ran before. So in this case, I ran the AR pass to invoice, and to run the report you would just need to click on run and then it opens the output file in Excel. So clicking on the run button starts a background concurrent request that generates an Excel file. And once the concurrent process is finished, our form opens the output automatically. So that the output looks like this then and has uh, is also preformed. So it has, for example, the first line fix, the auto filter set, so that you can start working with the data immediately. So this one is now receivable past your invoice. And as a user, you can modify the layout of the report. So you can, up here, you can select a report name, you can restrict parameters to restrict the data, and you can also create templates. So here's a template button. And here you can pick and choose the data that you would like to see. By default, all the columns are selected, but you could, for example, decide that you only want to see certain columns or you want to can reorder them. You can multi-select columns and then move them to the hidden columns, or you can hide all of them and only select the ones that you want to see. And you can move them around, move them up and down. And next time you run a report, it comes out exactly with these columns only. So that is the template functionality, which we have introduced a while back so that every user can create their own view of the data. And yeah, so, but on the template, the users, they cannot just uh, select the columns. They can also, for example, define aggregations. So here we have, if the data set is very large, you could uh, summarize, for example, the amounts or something like that, and then to pre-aggregate the data. And you can also define uh, thing which we call sheet break. So here, this is to split up the data onto different Excel sheets. So for example, if you have a very large data set and you want to break up the data by different invoice types, for example, here, then you can check this box. And then every time the report runs, 
it creates a different sheet for every invoice type in this case. So now we have uh, yeah, the Excel coming up again and you see now it has many different sheets here and one sheet is having every invoice type. So that's how it works. Yeah. That's the sheet break. You can also break it up by two different columns. So you can do by class and type and then uh, it creates uh, every for every combination of invoice type and invoice class, it creates one sheet. So you see now we have uh, this one, this is this one, class invoice and so on. So that's the sheet break functionality. There's also what especially finance users like a lot is this pivoting functionality. So if you would like to aggregate the data, you could define pivoting on the right-hand side like this. And then, let me do it like this. And then you can create, so these fields, they work in the same way as in Excel, uh, in the Excel pivot, your filters, columns, rows, and values. So you can move some of the fields into these uh, uh, four areas for the pivot definition. And then there's a second sheet created in the Excel that has the data pivoted like this. Oh, and if you have questions, we can, uh, at the end, we would, of course, uh, stop for questions, but you can also, in between, you can also use the chat functionality and write them in a chat because my colleague Mogish is also on and he knows a lot about especially this Excel functionality, so he can answer questions in between. So this is the pivoting that the users can create uh, to, yeah, to uh, aggregate the data. And so these templates, every report can have more than one template and the users, they can name them these templates. They could, for example, say this is pivoting by class and invoice type, something like that. And then these templates, they can also be shared with other users. So here you have a, sh a sharing option. By default, the templates are private, but you can share them with other users or with everyone in the system, then you can share them on site level. So that's basically the functionality. There are a little bit more layout options, but I'll show them a little bit later. Uh, because one of the main features of the Splits Report tool is that as a developer, you is also very easy to create new reports. So many people working with EBS, they are familiar with SQL uh, queries and even functional people of if they work many years with EBS, they often have a little bit of SQL knowledge because uh, even if you're not a developer, often to investigate some some scenarios or some issues, we, we have a lot of uh, customers who have functional users who learned a little bit of SQL over time. And with Blitz report, it's very easy to create new reports. So you can, if you have development access, then you have the setup button here. So as a user, you only you can only run reports, but if you are specific develop, if you're set up as a developer, then you can click on the setup button here, and then you have access to the SQL query of the report. So here's the SQL query of this AR pass to invoice report. And we also then have parameter definition, which restricts the data. And we have the security, security assignment. So that defines which reports are visible for which users or which responsibilities or on which applications and so on. And then we have a categorization. So let me show you how to create a new report. I think that's most interesting. Let's say AP test. So to create a new report, you would just enter an SQL query. I'm doing a very simple example. APS where one equals one. So we query on AP suppliers. So that's it. And then you can click on this run button or you can use the short key LR and it starts generating the Excel file. So this was the old one and it produces the output in Excel. So this is now the result of the query in nicely in Excel. So in this case, all the columns from AC suppliers and yeah, let me make it a little bit more interesting. So this is only AP suppliers, APS. Come here. name, APS. One. It is Bluetooth because of my ears. I have. Thank you. And the number. How oh, uh, when it started?
Okay. And yeah, let me add the AP invoice data as well. AP invoices, all, because when we have a transaction data set, there's more that we can do with it. APS vendor. AA. So the tool comes with already more than 400, almost 450 reports out of the box, which we have created. But you can also, of course, create your own reports. So we can import reports from other tools like uh, PR Publisher or from Discoverer especially. So we have an automated migration routine from Discoverer and you can also import reports from other sources, like also other third-party tools. Uh, but now I'm creating a, an SQL query manually. I'm selecting all the columns from the AP invoice table like this. And now it's a, all the AP invoice data. So it's a large data set. So let me restrict it by supplier name and also parameter for the invoice date. So we can create parameters by just copying them from other reports, which is what I'm doing now. We could also type the parameter name here and the where clause manually, but it's quicker to just copy, which is what I just did. So now let's say we want all the invoices from January 2005, and I'm running it like this. And now we have the file is just downloading and opening. So here is now the actual file. So this is all the invoice data from January 2005. Here's first, the first two columns, they come from the supplier table. And then the last columns, they come from the invoice table. So in this case, we have many, many columns, also many columns which we don't need. For example, all the flex feed columns, they are not used on this test environment. So we can, as a, we could either modify the SQL query to remove these columns, or we can also create a template and just hide the columns from the view here. So we can also just hide all of them and select only the invoice columns. Let's say currency code, the amounts, and probably some of these. And then we can, let's move the amounts to the end and it looks nicer. We can also type the position directly. So if I type position nine, everything moves down there and we can again create uh, an application, let's say by currency, like this. And then we create the pivot, again, pivoting the data by source and invoice type. And now we have the data in Excel. So the first sheet is showing the detailed data here. In this case, we only have now the relevant columns, invoice date and invoice number, and then the amount columns at the end, and the invoice type and the invoice source. And here we have the aggregation. But now let's assume as a user, you don't like this uh, this pivot layout and you would like to add additional analysis, let's say graph or pie chart. So you can do that now in Excel and reuse it as a template. So for example, let's make a little bit more space, remove the currency code, or we can move it into a slicer. So, now I'm moving the currency code into Lysa instead. And let's also do it the other way around, probably starting with type and then the source looks better. And we can insert uh, a pie chart. Okay, so that's good. And let's assume we would also like to have all these amounts aggregated by supplier name. So that we see the largest suppliers quickly in a graph. Let's do vendor name and the invoice amount. Yeah, maybe not this sort of chart. Let's insert a different, the vertical one. I think that's better. You can also sort them to show the biggest ones on top. Okay, so here we have now a second second chart showing the suppliers. And we can also change the layout, for example, if you want them in a different color and uh, could also add a company logo if we wanted. And here on the data sheet, we can also apply certain, uh, certain styles. So we can apply conditional formatting or we could change the font of the data if we want, something like that. So let's assume we have all this 
uh, layout. So we have this analysis created and now we want to reuse it. So every time the report runs, it should come out exactly in this format. So all these changes I have now done on the file in the download folder on my laptop. So we can save the file and we can upload it to the template here. So here's an Excel upload functionality. So that is only, that is for the layout. So it's not updating data in Oracle. It's basically just saving the layout and remembering then the, the style. So we can upload the file. So now it's uploaded here to the template. Here we see the file name and we see then the data sheet, the sheet that is inside. This is the additional pivot sheet. This one was the pivot for that we had initially. And we can also name it um, accordingly. So we could say this is now pivot with dashboard, something like this. And uh, we can close this or we can leave it open. And that means next time we run it now for different parameters. So before we ran it for January 2005, let's run it for a different year and maybe for the whole year 2007 instead. And here you see the status of the report. So it was showing running, now it's finished already. So this was the old file. Now we have basically the same file or the same layout created with new data. So you see it looks different because now we have all the AP invoice data from the whole year 2007. So this is our template functionality so that you can run, uh, create your own templates. And for example, analysis like this, dashboards and so on and upload it. And then next time it runs again, it comes up exactly in that layout. And you also saw it's very fast. So something to mention about the performance. So the tool is optimized for performance. If you run it yeah, on your system, you should probably not do it because it's most likely more data. But here on our test system, we don't have that much invoice data. So we can just run it without any restriction. And it still completes within a few seconds. And now my Excel is busy loading the file because it's now bigger. You see now we have, uh, in this case, we have now all the AP invoice data in the whole system, all the different currencies and everything that we basically have. And uh, on the first sheet, let's see how large the data is. So now we have all the AP invoice data in the system starting from 1996 under 2023. And let's see how many records. So we have 145,611 records, basically. And it only took, usually takes about three to four seconds to generate this file. So it's very fast for large data. And there is one more thing, which is very nice for the users, which they like a lot. So in this case, I ran it now for everything, but in we have also parameter for the suppliers. So usually in Oracle standard, when you want to run a report, you can often just select a from and to range, or you can run it for one value only. And sometimes it allows wildcards that you can run it like this, but that's about it. But you cannot run it for a list of suppliers. But in this case, if you would like to run a report, let's say for the biggest suppliers that you have here in an Excel file already, because here we have building management and so on. If you would like to run it for these biggest suppliers only, then you can copy the list of values from an Excel file. In this case, it's on this pivot sheet. So we can here on this pivot sheet, you can copy the, the parameter values and then you can paste them in here. So for that, you would need to check this multiple values box and then you can use the, uh, the Oracle standard, uh, this pencil or the, the editor window to copy and paste uh, all the values with the line feed. And then you can run it exactly for these values only. And that works. Now I'm using it for the suppliers. So let's see when the output comes up. You see now this is the output exactly for the suppliers only. So that's the multiple values functionality, which is uh, very useful if you want to run a report, let's say for a list of account numbers, list of inventory items, anything like that. Uh, Okay, so that is that multiple values functionality. Then we have one more 
nice feature which is uh, which we have recently integrated that is this excel icon here and with this excel icon you can link the report to or the blitz reports to oracle standard screens so in this case for example we have this report looking at ap invoice data and let's assume we would like to have this report on the oracle standard invoice uh, form so we can here on this assignments we can define where we want to make the report available. So by Oracle standard, you would only make it available in request groups, but we have more levels. For example, we could define, assign it to application level. If we assign it to the Payables application, for example, it would mean that every user and a responsibility that is linked to the Payables application would be allowed to run a report. And on the other end, which is what I'm, going to show now is the forms assignment and forms assignment means that you can assign this report to an Oracle standard screen or also to your custom form so if you have here you have a list of all the forms in the system and in this case on the top is the the AP invoice workbench because we have already 14 reports assigned to it so we can select that we can now choose that we want this report on the AP invoice workbench from Oracle standard and it means when we now go to payables, we can uh, go to the Oracle standard AP invoice workbench screen here. And let me also query invoices so that we can do this integration. Oh, 1st of January would be better. And let's query the whole month like this. Okay, so now we have a couple of invoices and we have now this Excel icon again and you see it has a small yellow star next to it and that means that for this Oracle screen we have specific reports signed. When we click on it, we have a list of all the reports that we have and at the top on the list of the list is our new report, AP test. So we can select it and then we could run it directly from here. But you see none of these at the moment the parameters are not defaulted but we might want if we want come from the oracle screen we might want to run the report let's say the invoice history in this case for the supplier that we have open or for which we have the invoice open let's say for this one here so we can complete the setup then we take the the forms item this one here forms item name is vendor name and then we open up our report we go to the setup go to the assignments and now here in this for this forms assignment we can define the default parameters we can say that if we come from the oracle screen we want the supplier name defaulted from the field vendor name like this and that means next time we click on here we can just with two mouse clicks we click on it we can press enter to start running and then it opens nicely the invoice history for the supplier for which we currently have an invoice open. You see, in this case, it's only for Stargate Limited. And that is very nice because we have, on any Oracle standard screen, we can link these uh, Excel exports and uh, yeah, enhance the Oracle screens with that. And we have done that out of the box. You see here, for example, we have already some out of the box reports. We have the trial balance or cash requirements. So these are seeded reports, which we deliver out of the box with the tool, which uh, you can run directly from the Oracle screen stand. So you see, this is the cash requirement for the supplier. And especially on the, on the finance side, so in general ledger, the finance users, they are most likely, they're mostly interested in the subledger details. So for example, if they have a specific journal, let's say, let's create a journal here. So we have a couple of journals. And if you would be interested into the subledger details or the transactions for one of these journals, let's say this one here. So you can again, click on this Excel icon and then have a list of reports, for example, the account analysis. And the account analysis shows the subledger transaction details then for the journal that we currently have open on the Oracle screen. So in this case, you see the Oracle screen, I had this uh, journal name and this batch name open, and then it transfers these parameter values directly into these journal and batch name parameters. And then we have 
the the account analysis details or basically subledger details nicely in an Excel file. So also here we have a template which pivots the data according to an account hierarchy. In this case, for example, we have on this test system, we have one account hierarchy, which is called parent total. So this one contains all account types. So assets, the liability accounts. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm not an accountant, but it contains all different account types. So usually you probably have a hierarchy for profit and loss accounts only or for different account types. But in this case, we have one for everything. And then the result is that the amounts are automatically placed into the uh, hierarchies. And in this case, we have five different accounts affected. And because on the first sheet, you have all the details, you could, for example, click on the inventory resource value on the 44,000, and then you have all the details uh, of these 44,000. Because on the first sheet, you have then the transaction details. So starting with all the values coming from GL, for example, the line amounts, then we have uh, here is the chart of accounts, so all the segments. And then we have the amounts. So for example, where's the accounted amount? Here we have the total amount at 16.079 million. So that's the, the total journal amount. And then we have further to the right, we have a lot of subledger transaction details. So here we have these transaction numbers. They don't mean much in this case. In this case, I used a journal which was from cost management, so from inventory. So it's material transactions, basically. And so here's the source. And here, for example, we have columns which show the sales order numbers. So some of the material transactions, they were sales order related. So that's when we see the sales order number and the customer number and customer name. And the purchase order related transactions, we see the purchase order number and the supplier number, supplier name. And we also then see <coughs> the material transaction details further to the right. So here, for example, you have the quantities, the items, and yeah, price information and then the transaction types. So depending on from which source the journal entry comes from, these different columns are populated. For example, if it comes from AP, then you have the invoice number and invoice detail and vendor information populated. And if it comes from projects, you have here things like project and task numbers or expenditures uh, populated. So that's how the drilled on from the Oracle standard screen works. So that is the, the reporting sites uh, for, that, those are some of the features of Blitz report. We have this, this link to Oracle standard screens. We have done it on a lot of forms meanwhile. So for example, even if you work with the system and you, you're interested into a certain profile option values, let's say, Let's look at the Blitz report related profile option. You can click on this Excel icon again, and then you can run directly a report showing you all the profile option values for the profile option that you have open on the Oracle screen. So in this case, it's the Blitz reports uh, access profile option showing then the different values on the different levels here. So that's how that integration works. And Andy, so, uh, yes. Andy, there's a question on the chat. Do we have yeah, any please. report that shows data for reconciliation uh, subledger with GL? So if you can uh, also touch upon that. Yes, that is, um, it's the question from which area, so. It's from Rashid, uh, so maybe yes. Rashid can. Is it, so we have, for example, the, so it's exactly this one, basically. So we have, let's say for the, um, the GL account analysis comes from the GL side. And then we have, for example, yeah, let's take an example. Let's say the AP reports in the AP area. So you have the trial balance. Let me go to payables. I mean, I'm not an accountant, but so if we have the AP trial balance, and you run it for a certain S of day, let's say 31st of December, you need to use something very old, let's say zero, zero 08, let's use this one. 
but that's also worthwhile mentioning. So we have most of these Oracle standard reports that come out in a text format and we have them nicely in Excel. So that, uh, and we keep on adding more over time. So for example, this one, AP trial balance comes out in, doesn't come out in Excel in Oracle standard. Or for example, the AR7 buckets from receivables, they come out in a text format and we have them in this tool so that you can use them in, in Excel. So in this case, we have the trial balance and we have, for example, here on the liability account. So in this case, there's only one liability account. And here we have a pivot, a pivoting to the different, uh, uh, for the different suppliers. And here we have now, we have now the, what is it? We have uh, different account record types. So we have one record type for the total account for every liability account. And then we have individual records for the individual transactions so that we see the invoices. So here we see, for example, the, um, the total balance and oh, there's a template. Maybe I can take off the template and see if we have more data in there because I think we also have start and end and movement columns. Oh, no, this is just the orchestra standard. Yeah. I'm, mixing it up with something else. So it's basically, this is the GL balance. And yeah, so basically the same data is from the Orca standard file balance. And this, this amount you could now query from the, from the GL side as well, from the, uh, from our GL account analysis, for example, for that, journal source, let's say uh, payables. And then you would can probably choose the same period. Yeah, anyway, you could reconcile like this. And then you could, for example, only fetch all the amounts which are coming from the payables subledger for one specific period. And then you can reconcile data like that. Uh, and you could also, of course, uh, choose then the code combination. So you could, for example, say here, not for all accounts, you could say you want to see the data only for as for that liability account or for that code combination. And I was opening already. So this was now, this is now all the data from uh, the payable subledger for that period. And then you would see here, for example, yeah, you have all the transaction details basically. Again, and in this case, because it comes from payables, it has things like the invoice number and the invoice descriptions and a couple of columns. So if it was uh, purchase or related, you would have purchase order numbers. And in this case, you have payment methods, yeah. And we should also have the supplier names. Yeah, here you have the supplier names. So those sort of details you have. And you could also run a report for, let's assume you have a certain account. Let's say here, this liabilities account. You could also run a report exactly for that account only. And then you can look at everything that ended up on that account, not just from the payable source. Something like this. That is probably very quick because it's only the single code combination. Let's see. Okay. So now it's finishing. And now we have uh, this is the uh, the summary, and here we have now all the different sources. For example, here we have something from men, from a spreadsheet uploaded, and then we have the records coming from the Oracle standard subledger. So that's how you can, what you can use for reconciliation. And we have specifically for reconciliation, we have um, different reports, which I, because I'm not a finance expert, but we have some very popular reports for cash management as well. 
So we have, for example, reports which can reconcile general ledger with the sub ledger. Where's the reconciliation? Let me look at the uh, and genetics one only. This one, bank statement in reconciliation. This one probably. Yeah, I'm not sure which parameters we would need to choose, but we could generally, yeah, in this case, oh, we need to choose the bank account first, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so familiar with this data. I'm not sure which uh, parameters we should use, but we can for these reports, we have also, that's also worth mentioning, for some of these reports, or for many of them, we have uh, default, we have example output files on our web page. So you could, for example, go to our library in this case, and here for the cache reconciliation, let's say cache management, I wanted to look at general ledger reconciliation. We have then uploaded example Excel files. Let's see how, if we have something that can be shown here. Okay, it's coming up. Yes, it would look like this. So for example, we have uh, the, here we have the details and then here we have a sheet which shows the reconciliation. The general ledger cash account balance, the bank statement closing balance and then unreconciled receipt, unreconciled payments and unreconciled journal lines. And then, yeah, for, or for one bank account. So this all sort of details we have in in the tool. I think Andy, uh, I put it on the chat as well for the references, okay. the link of the library. Uh, we are just, ah, eight, I think it's 18, 18 minutes more. So just- uh, Yes, we need to quick. Yes, okay. So I see basically we have uh, a lot of these reports. Let's say GL, one of the reports mentioned was the GL balance. So is, that is the one, only having the balances, not the subledger transaction details. So it's the highest level of aggregation. And in here, for example, it's also the ones that uh, the report that runs quickest because it doesn't have the details. So you could run it for, let's say, financial, multiple financial periods, let's say January to April 08. And then we can decide if we want to show the start balance and we could also decide if we want to compare budgets versus actuals or if we just want to show the actuals. Let me just run it as an example for, for actuals. And then it shows for multiple periods, it shows the amounts also nicely pivoted into an account hierarchy. So that's this one. So here, so you see here, you have these financial periods and then you have the account hierarchy. And because it's an Excel, you can mm, yeah, refine it so you can view it by cost center or by department and so on. So that's the interactive part. And you have all the details on the first sheet then. So that's uh, the GL balance. So let's, especially because there might be some companies who work with manufacturing and we have, I wanted to show also uh, the some of the manufacturing functionality that we have because that was one of the big news in our latest release uh, 326 that we have now more than 90 cost accounting reports in a tool so they come from a cost accounting uh, specialist in us Douglas Waltz. so he worked with uh, oracle in the 90s and he designed uh, he was part of the development or was leading the development for cost accounting back uh, when he worked for oracle and then he continued his work as a consultant and also created a lot of reports over the years which deal with uh, manufacturing costing. So companies who, who work with manufacturing or have inventory uh, inventories that needs to be evaluated and th this library is very um, valuable. We also did a webinar, was it last week or the week before about this? And we also have the recording. So if you're interested, reach out to us and we can send you a recording where Doug Waltz explains how all these reports are used. So they have a lot of uh, valuable functionality in there. And we also have for manufacturing customers, we have a functionality 
which enables users to quickly navigate through the manufacturing modules. So that is called the supply chain hub. So it's an add-on to Blitz report, and it is basically a navigation help for, for planners and for people working with inventory and manufacturing processes. So it starts with a screen like this, where users can look for uh, items, inventory items by various criteria. And specifically for, for companies using the planning module. So up here, for example, you can choose a certain uh, uh, manufacturing plan, and then you can, for example, look for any item that has certain exceptions. So you could look for items that have passed you orders, and then you can click on search. And here you can decide uh, if you have assemblies and bill of materials, uh, to which level you want to explode these bill of materials. So here, for example, we have now two explosion levels. You can also increase or decrease the bill of materials, or you can decrease. And the idea of the screen is that you have that it's much easier to navigate through the Oracle screens than with Oracle Standard, because from here, for certain items, you could, for example, right click and then you can navigate to the oracle screens for example you can navigate to the on hand quantity screen here for the digital camera and then oh that was a little bit too quick where was the digital camera here and then it directly opens the oracle form with the on hand quantity and the different inventory organizations for the digital camera or any of these uh, forms item definition on the item screen so that's the drill down to Oracle screens with right click. And we can also use these hyperlinks. So for example, on the on-hand quantity, we can on the 11, you can also click and then you also navigate to that Oracle screen. <clears throat> or you can also run reports for certain items. So you can highlight items, you can multi-select them using the control key and the shift key. And then you can, uh, select the items and then you can select reports that you want to run for these so you could for example for example run horizontal plan information so that is specifically for users working with the oracle planning modules the horizontal plan is very important because they it shows them the projected availability of the the different items so in this case it opens a blitz report also here we have a dashboard so we created this one for uh, our largest customer so that they have can highlight different items and then they have the projected available balance but the details so this is just a dashboard basically showing all the projected uh, balance but the details are here on the first sheet so this is the raw data coming from <coughs> oracle and then we have the pivoting to the horizontal plan so in this case you have for every item you have different rows for the different supply types. So if, for example, you're only interested in the projected on hand on certain dates, you can narrow it, filter it like this. And then you have for all these different items here, you have here the pivoting to the different buckets. In this case, we have very detailed buckets because we have daily buckets. So we see then the projected uh, on hand in the different buckets. So that's for planners. And so basically that's the functionality. You can search for certain items, then you can explode or collapse the bill of materials, you can navigate to Oracle standard screens. And you can also here, you can filter for certain items. So for example, you could filter for all items that are manufactured uh, or all items that are purchased. So that or all items for from a certain buyer or certain uh, planner. So that's here, this filter functionality. And then, the main function, main idea behind this form was also to show the supply and demand situation for individual items. So for example, here for a monitor, if you are interested in the preview of the supply demand for this monitor, you can click on the supply demand tab or on the hyperlink, and then you see the supply demand projection for this monitor. In this case, we have uh, purchase orders to so right now on hand with 1203 items then we have purchase orders 200 coming in and then we have a work order consuming 1283 and you can click on this identifier and then 
we have, uh, you can drill down into the Oracle screens again. And also here we have a nicer display of all the quantities in currently in queue so that you see which quantities are in your operation steps. I'm going a little bit quick now because we only have 10 minutes and I would also like to show you the upload functionality, but basically this form is very useful for companies using the Oracle manufacturing modules and specifically using the planning. So if they use planning modules and yeah, and they can also, they also have functionality to release plant orders from here. For example, they could release the plant orders in the same way as from the planner workbench, but nicely everything in one single screen because to release plant orders in Oracle standard, you have to go to the planning server if you use advanced supply chain planning. And, and here we can release them from the ERP side, from the EBS side. And we can also uh, accept the action. So that's the, the supply chain hub. And if you're interested into more function, more details of this, we can also arrange an individual session and then uh, show you that uh, supply chain hub in more detail. So let me show you the most, for us, the most exciting new functionality, which we have developed uh, over the past months and which we will release officially very soon. And that is our new upload functionality. So for that, I'm logging into a new, into a different server because we were asked by customers which were using web ADI and other tools or data load, but if we could do something with our tool to help them upload data from uh, Excel to Oracle. Because, and the reason why they asked us was that the, the existing tools were too slow. So for example, web ADI or also other tools on the market, they were nice for a certain amounts of data, but for thousands or even 10,000 or 100,000 of records, it didn't work anymore. So for example, web ADI does not work to update 100,000 inventory items. And we have created an upload functionality in Blitz report now that works in a way that you can query existing, uh, so you have uploads, no longer reports, and you have certain uploads. Let me just give some examples. So on this test system, we have some example uploads. So we have an upload for item cost. We have an upload for uh, journals, for AP invoices and user creation and responsibilities and so on. And we also have an upload for uh, plant orders to release plant orders. So you can have different uploads and define your own ones as well. And they work very much like web ADI, but in the validation is nicer and also the um, the performance is uh, different. So let me show you the example how this works based on the PO requisition creation and update. So in this case, we have in this example, we have a parameter where we can select if we want to create or if we want to create or update data. And we can, in this case, I'm choosing the create or update mode. So if we would choose create, we would uh, create a blank Excel file in which we can uh, insert new records. But if we choose create or update, we can first query, exi query existing data and then we can update it. So in this case, I'm querying all the PO requisition data from 2005 to 2007. So we would first run the report or oh, in this case, it's an upload, run it like this. And it generates an Excel file. So this was the old one. And now we have a new Excel file. So this is now uh, the an Excel file and it's no longer just an Excel as X. You see it is an Excel as M because now we have a macro that does this color highlighting. So the colors mean that everything that is gray is not allowed to be updated because for example, for existing requisitions, you are not allowed to update the requisition number anymore. 
but for and also if you create new records you have to provide so the yellow columns are the required ones so if you create new records you have to provide a line type and source type and an item and item description for example and now we can update uh, the data in excel so that's the whole idea of this tool that you can nicely do it in excel let's say description test yeah and then we can, because it's Excel, we can do it for all of the records. And you see there's a macro, as soon when you update the records, there's a macro highlighting the records which are, which it detects as modified. And now we just modify these records, but we can also create new records. To create new records, we can either enter them manually or we can just copy and paste existing lines. So let me just copy these lines and paste them here, or we can also create a new record. Let me create a new one from scratch. So we have a list of values then for the for certain columns. And so in this case, we want a supplier. And we need an item. So which other columns do we have? So we need which item, for example, I think F8000 always works. So this one. And then you see it automatically understands the dependencies and populates the category and unit of measure. And here, what else do we need? We need a quantity. In this case, I'm entering a negative quantity because I want to show, so show you the error handling. So we don't have much validation on the servers on the client side now. The validation is happening on the server side. So I'm on purpose, I enter now minus 10 so that you can see what happens if we have an error. And we will also need to insert the destination type and the deliver to location we also need. Let's choose the deliver to location. Let's say we need, we take uh, Cordoba. Okay, so we have modified all this in in the file in the downloads folder on my laptop so now i'm saving it and everything is valid so this is only basic validation which checks for example if we have all the columns populated if you have something blank then it says missing values for for the field line type so that's what we can this is the basic validation that is happening and so now everything is saved and we can once everything is saved let me save it again. Okay, we can upload the whole file to the server here. So I'm choosing the file from the downloads folder. And now the whole file, the whole file is uploaded and is processed on the server side. And that's why it is much, much faster than Web ADI and other tools because it's processed in bulk on the server. So it even works for 100,000 records. And that was the goal with this development because we have uh, some very large customers who need an export or need a, this upload functionality to load thousands or 10,000 of records into the tool. And so or the processing, I did not show that. So once the processing is completed, it generates a new Excel file like this. In this case, we had, uh, in this case, we had, more error message than expected. So we had also the need by date needs to be greater than today for these updates. So all of them failed. And here, this was three requisition creations worked. They worked fine. But also here, we have the error message quantity needs to be greater than zero. So these come from the server side. Uh, and But now we can correct the data directly in the Excel. So the date needs to be greater than today. Let's say 4th of May 23. So that would be tomorrow, the need by date. Oh, it, uh, it had its in US date format. So let's say 4th of August 23. And this is the actual date detection. So let's say, let's update all these records. And let's also correct the quantity, which was minus 10. Let's correct it to plus 10, so make it correct. And then we can save the, the file again, and it detects the ones which we have corrected. 
and we can upload the whole file again with the new corrected data. And then hopefully it should go all through. Let's see. So now we submit again. And when we submit, you see it here, you see the status on the button. So it shows running. And what is happening now in this case, because it's pure requisition creation, it starts the Oracle standard requisition import and also the create releases process. And at the end, it creates a report again, showing the results. And then now we should see the results because it's opening automatically. You see now all of these are created and updated as well. And we would find this requisition now in Oracle. So we could see then, yeah, basically we can go to the um, requisitions summary and then we would find the new requisition number that we have just created this one here. So this is the one with the F8000 item that I've just created basically 10 pieces for 37. So that was a little bit in a rush because we have reached one hour already. Uh, and I didn't leave much time for questions, but uh, we have questions. Because I, I would have 15 minutes more if you would have uh, some questions. There were some in the chat. I, I believe in between, let me just read all the yeah. chat messages. And there were, there were two questions. One is, do we yeah. have, does this tool uh, integrate with Oracle Fusion? So I've responded to that stating that it is not yet ready, but it's yes. there in our roadmap and we are uh, planning to have a similar tool uh, by end of uh, 2024. That was yeah. one. Then the second one was uh, the reconciliation. Uh, so I've given the list, uh, I've given the link for our library and uh, link for library with general ledger reports and with uh, sub ledger reports and some samples like AP trial balance and GL account analysis okay. and GL that's balance. Good. There's only two questions on the chat. Okay, that's good. So no more questions. Sikanda, you are also there? Uh, no, thank you very much because I asked one question that was for Fusion and... Uh, yes. Uh, your friend uh, colleague replied that it Not will yet. be it is in plan in, in the yes. roadmap so for sure we'll be waiting for that and it is really a nice tool as being an oracle ebs uh, user for a long time and uh, uh, of course this recording will be available so we'll be sharing with the community as well so those who were not yes. able to attend due to certain uh, different reasons they can also know the product and then they can come back to you for further details for sure Okay, yes, please. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you, Andy then, and team. Thanks for organizing and okay, thanks everyone sure. for joining. And I'm looking forward to our next session. Have a nice sure. afternoon. Thank you. See you soon. Thank bye bye. You. Take Thank care. You. Bye.